What is going on everybody, it's Steven here and welcome back to another Chinese tablet review. Now today we're going to have a look at the Techlast X98 Air 3G tablet from Pandavo.com. Now yeah, I was looking for a long time for a tablet because before this I was using the Voyo Wimpad, so the small 7 inch tablet I've reviewed a long time ago. And yeah, I thought it's time for something different, so a 10 inch tablet and then I found this tablet here on Pandaville. And on the data sheet it looks amazing. So it's a dual boot tablet. That means you can choose if you want to boot Windows 8 or Android. And I found this very interesting. So this is why I reviewed this tablet here for you. Now I have got the tablet for about $245 from Pandaville.com. The link is down below in the description if you're interested. And there will be also a written review of the tablet on ChinaDevices.com. So check out the link down below. And now let's get started and let's have a look at the box and at the specs of the Techlast X98 Air. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so here you can see the stick on the box and you can see it's the 3G version. The non-3G version is cheaper. So the non-3G version without SIM card slot retails for something like $200. And this version here retails for $240. And the $40 are definitely worth it because you get a SIM card slot and you can do calls, send messages and also have mobile internet on the tablet, which is definitely worth the money. But yeah, let's have a look at the rest of the specs. So this baby here comes with a 9.7 inch capacitive touchscreen and the LCD display comes with a resolution of 2048 times 1536 pixels. That's Retina display just like on the iPad. And I have to say, the screen looks totally awesome. There's absolutely no difference to the iPad in my opinion. Now, yeah, the SoC is a Intel chip. So it's the 3736F. It's a quad-core CPU clocked at 2.16 GHz. Now, yeah, I've said it's dual boot. So it comes with Android 4.4.2 KitKat straight out of the box. And yeah, that's the basic operating system. But it also comes with Windows 8.1 pre-installed. But as you will see later, um, it's not a activated version, so you have to activate it on your own. It's pre-installed, but there is no license key included. And if you want to switch the operating system, then you have to reboot. So you cannot switch the operating systems on the go. That's not possible. But yeah, it's pretty cool that you can use both things because the chip is compatible with Android and also Windows. It comes with 2GB of RAM, which is definitely enough for Android. And yeah, it's also okay for Windows 8, because Windows 8.1 here uses something like about 1GB in idle. Then here we have 32GB of NAND flash, and yeah, it's just split at 50-50, which is not that good, because in Windows 8 you just have about 15GB of usable space, and yeah, Windows takes a lot, and my space is already full. So you can extend the internal memory by using microSD cards. But it's not added to your memory, so it just mounts as a different partition, so as a micro SD card. So there's actually no way to really extend the internal memory. So you can just mount external partitions, so external media, like the micro SD card or USB drives with the OTG cable. Now, it also comes with a 2.0 megapixel front facing camera and a 5 megapixel rear camera. But yeah, the cameras don't look really good. Then, Wi Fi, as I've said, is on board. Then also OTG, micro HDMI to connect it to a monitor, also Bluetooth and a 3G modem so it supports 2G and WCDMA. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so basically that are the main specs of the tablet. Also the design is really nice so let's just go and let's have a look at the design of the tablet. Okay, so I forgot before we have a look at the tablet, let's see what we can find inside of the box and let me quickly show you all the accessories. Now yeah, I have ordered the tablet from Pandaville as I've said. And there was such a charger included. Now the only bad thing is that it doesn't fit in my power socket so I have to use a adapter. But yeah, also all in all the charger doesn't look that good so I'm using my own charger. But here you can see USB port and it outputs something like 10 watts or um, maybe a bit more 12 watts. I'm not really sure. Then you can also see here my uh, main charger which I use for the tablet because this is a universal charger and it outputs something like 10 watts on the tablet port. And this is definitely enough to charge the tablet also pretty fast. So I would maybe recommend to change the charging accessories. Then here you can see the micro USB cable which is included. So it's a normal micro USB cable, nothing special which you also use to charge the tablet. Then here you can see a OTG adapter cable. So this is a micro USB connector to USB 2.0 port to connect USB devices or a USB hub. 
then yeah, the user manual or quick starter guide or whatever it is just comes in Chinese. And that's really bad because yeah, I wanted to check out how to boot into the BIOS, but yeah, then I found it out on my own. But yeah, um, quick starter guides, manual, warranty card, everything here comes in Chinese. So yeah, that's a bit bad, but if you just keep in mind that nice tablet for just $240, yeah, who cares about the warranty card? Alright, so let's throw this away and now let's have a look at the Techlast X98 Air. Now here it is guys, it's really big and I've had the iPad 2 and I have to say it really feels a bit like the iPad 2. Just um, the frame doesn't feel that good like on the iPad. Now here we have a metal back cover, but the metal seems to be um, a bit thin so it doesn't feel that good like on the iPad. Now here in the left top corner we have the front facing camera, then here you can see the display colors, sharpness, outstanding. So the display looks absolutely great. It's definitely just like on the iPad, so like a retina display. It's a really good display. Here the backside also looks quite good and yeah, um, it is metal but it doesn't seem to be very thick. Then here you can see the logo, so some Chinese logo here, X98 Air. Here we have a dual speaker design, but yeah, they are mono speakers but they are quite loud and the quality is okay. Then here at the top we have a plastic bar, I'm not sure what's under it, maybe the antenna or something. Then here also you can see the back camera, so it's a 5 megapixel camera, but as you will see later, camera quality not really good. The thickness is totally nice, so it's about 9mm thick as you can see. And if you just have a look at this, so this really looks like an iPad and air in the title of this device is definitely correct. Then here you can see the volume rockers and the power button. All the buttons here are placed on this side of the tablet and if you want to boot the BIOS, so the dual boot BIOS and the OS selection, then you have to hold volume up and power. Now here you can see the slots, so we have here a SIM card slot, it's a big SIM card slot, and here a TF card slot up to 64 gigs, and the bottom microphone for for instance doing calls or something or Skype. Here for instance we have the micro USB connector, then a 3.5mm headphone jack to connect a headset and a micro HDMI output. So you can also connect a monitor, so you could use it as a computer with monitor, keyboard, but then you cannot charge it because there is no DC in. And that's really bad in my opinion. Now the build quality um, feels pretty good, just sometimes it feels a bit like the glass would come off, but it doesn't come off. There's maybe some air between that and sometimes it feels a bit strange, but all in all the build quality um, looks and feels definitely great. Okay guys, so now let me quickly show you how it feels and performs in Android. And I really have to say it's definitely smooth, so everything here really really smooth. The um, Intel CPU does a pretty good job in Windows and Android. Then let's go quickly here to the settings, let's go to about the tablet to see on which Android version it is running. So here we can see it's running on Android 4.4.4 KitKat. So that's the latest version right now for the tablet, but there are custom ROMs, so that's a good thing. There are really really custom ROMs and that's something I really like. Now here you can see we have Wi-Fi, I'm connected to Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi signal is pretty good. But here we also have mobile networks, so we have your data enabled and you can also use WCDMA so 3G and also do calls on the tablet just like on a smartphone. And here we have also HDMI settings if you have an external monitor but I don't have a micro HDMI connector. Then here you can see we have internal storage um, and basically we have here two partitions, so internal storage and internal ROM and the total usable space is not really much. So you can see we have something like about 3GB of usable space. So I would definitely recommend to get yourself a micro SD card like this one here. So 64 gigs, absolutely no problem on this tablet here. I'm not sure if more is supported, but 64 gigs is no problem at all. Then for instance, here we have the battery stats and they are very, very accurate because um, I have charged to 100% in the morning and then unplugged. And here you can see it. So 37% and I've used it now for a bit more than five hours. But I have really tested a lot of things, also the GPS test today, so um, that drains a lot of power, so the battery lifetime seems to be pretty good. But for instance, if you would compare it with the iPad, then it's just average, because on the iPad I had two or three days on battery lifetime, it was just amazing. And here, yeah, one day possible. Then here under all apps you can see it comes with a lot of Chinese chunk. Now the default ROM comes with so many Chinese applications but also wireless update is working, so I've got a wireless update after I've unpacked it. 
But yeah, those Chinese applications are very annoying, so I will definitely install the custom ROM. Then here we also have, for instance, location, so GPS, there will be a GPS test later. Language and input, so there are all languages in here which Android supports natively, but they are not translated to 100%, so keep that in mind. Then here you can see also the input can be changed to every language, and just a display language is maybe not translated to 100%, so some words maybe will remain in English, so keep that in mind because some people always ask me that. Okay guys, now basically that were the settings and now let's have a look at all the features here in Android. And just to keep this video here a bit shorter, we won't go through all the apps because it will take way too long. So um, just something I want to tell you is that it comes with the Play Store, so with all the Google apps you don't have to install them on your own, but it comes with a lot of Chinese chunk as you can see. We have Wireless Update, I think it's this one, no, that's some Chinese um, app store. Then here we have, yeah, wireless update. And wireless update is definitely working, so you can also see here auto update, but yeah, also in Chinese. But the best thing is that there are already two or three custom ROMs. So yeah, with those custom ROMs, you can improve the performance and get rid of all the um, Chinese chunk here. But yeah, that's basically it. And now I would say, um, I will show you some benchmarks and after the benchmarks, we'll talk about the performance. <laughs> So yeah, as you've seen, Antutu says on the level of the LG G3 in terms of performance, but Antutu is also mostly for smartphones. But I have to say, performance really great, and you can see um, it comes up to Snapdragon processors um, in terms of Android performance. And here you can see um, the dial application, so you can call it some random number. You can hear the speaker quality, you can use the speaker, and this works perfectly well with my SIM card. I'm not sure what, what frequencies are really supported, but yeah, um, just check out the data sheet. In my country, it works perfectly nice. Here we have the messaging application, so you can just compose here a new message. And this also works just like the messaging application on your smartphone. So it really replaces a smartphone if you have a second SIM card, and that's really great for me. Now, also browser here to use mobile internet, and yeah, that's really nice on the tablet. So what you will see right now is a movie test to hear the speaker quality, maybe another speaker test, and then we'll have a look at Windows 8.
All right, so the speaker quality quite nice. It's a mono speaker, but um, I have to say the quality quite nice, quite loud. It doesn't really oversteer and also the display quality is just outstanding as you've seen in the video test. Then here you can see the operating system selection. So you can choose if you want to use Android or Windows 8.1. And in the left top corner, you can choose um, if you want to um, that it pops up all the time when you start the tablet or that you just have to access it with the power button and the volume up button. But yeah, we'll just choose now Windows and now let's just boot Windows 8.1 and let's see how it performs in Windows mode. Now before we start Windows 8, I quickly want to show you the main BIOS because a lot of people have asked me, yes, you can really enter the BIOS and it's a American Megatrends BIOS, but um, most of the options are locked. So you just have here the boot options and you can enable here quiet boot, boot architecture and fast boot. So basically that are all the things you have and the boot options, but you cannot do more things. So there's absolutely no clock speed or something. Or... So that are all the settings, also no graphic settings. That's everything you can adjust here. And yeah, here you can, for instance, also boot override and then just safety changes and exit. So there we go guys. And here you can quickly see my setup. And yes, I wanted to simulate a desktop replacement. So here we have, for instance, the keyboard, which is connected to a USB hub. Here we have my mouse, which is also connected to a USB hub. So it's a full size mouse and you can see it's connected here. Also a USB drive and the USB hub is powered. Then all this, so the whole USB hub is connected to this OTG adapter. And that means um, everything is working. So OTG is definitely working on the tablet. The only bad thing is when you have all this shit connected, the tablet doesn't charge anymore. Then here we also have a speaker which you could connect with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. But yeah, um, the bad thing is that you now cannot charge the tablet. So it doesn't charge over micro USB right now. And that's really bad. If you have all this connected, it doesn't charge. And that's pretty cool on the Voyo Wimpad because it comes with a DC in connector, but this tablet not, which really, really sucks. All right, so finally we're here in Windows. So that's desktop mode on Windows 8.1. And yes, I'm using mouse and keyboard. So as you can see, it really feels like on a computer and it feels absolutely smooth. So for instance, um, if you know Intel Atom netbooks, then they are very laggy, but the tablet feels very smooth, even though it's a Intel Atom processor. But you can also use the touch screen here in desktop mode and that works perfectly nice. So let's have a look here at the Windows 8 tiles. And yeah, it's a bit buggy here with my mouse. So what's going on here? But yeah, let's see. Um, yeah, now it works. And you can see um, it really feels like on a tablet. So that's tablet mode. You can also go down to the apps. You can access the app store. You can download apps from there. But the only problem I have, if I download apps from the Windows Store, so um, 3D games or something, then they just lock up. But I will explain that to you a bit later. Then yeah, back here in desktop mode, so let's just check out here um, the networks. And you can see I'm connected now to um, HSPA, so UMTS. And it uses 3G, so with my SIM card and Wi-Fi is currently off. So let's see if the internet is working. and. Let's just do a quick speed test because um, I also want to see um, how fast the internet connection is because on the newest MTK 64 bit smartphones, for instance, I get something like 20 Mbit. So it really pushes 3G to the limit. And let's see um, how much Mbit this device can do. So let's go. And here's the speed test app. Wow, it loads up very slow. Yeah, let's begin the test and there we go. And yeah, I guess something 5 Mbit should be possible. So there we go. Let's see it. Okay, ping seems to be pretty good. But yeah, you can see download speed, not that good. I mean, yeah, it's a tablet, so you won't download really big data if you travel around. So that's absolutely useless. But um, something like 10 Mbit would be nice to have. But yeah, it also depends on the location we're now inside. Maybe a bit more as possible, but it's not that nice like on the MTK 64-bit smartphones. Like, I get 20 Mbits on the limit on 3G, but yeah, not here. But at least it's working on 3G. You can see I'm connected, HSPA, UMTS, whatever. And also Wi-Fi is working, so let's switch it to on. And I have to say, Wi-Fi signal pretty good on the tablet. There's absolutely nothing to complain about. I can also um, see here the Wi-Fi networks of my neighbors and that's pretty good because I'm in a house and the neighbors are about 50 meters away. 
Then here also Minecraft, so you can see for instance if I go here on a web page it loads up perfectly nice in desktop mode. But also here the Internet Explorer and tablet mode um, works perfectly nice. It's absolutely not laggy if you browse something. Also watching videos um, feels quite smooth on the tablet. The only bad thing is that 3D games just lock up all the time and also if you want to um, watch 2K movies on YouTube or something or something in a really high resolution the tablet locks up. I have no idea why. Then let's go quickly here um, to system and here you can see the system information. So the processor and for some reason it says here the CPU is running at 1.33 GHz. I have no idea why. But here you can see 2 gigs of RAM and all the basic specs. If we check out here at the bottom, Windows is not activated, so you have to have a product key. It's not included and you have to enter one, so buy Windows, guys. <laughs> then um, let's have a look here um, at the hard drive. So you can see we just have a 4 gigabytes free on the main partition, which is really not much. And here you can see my micro SD card and also a removable disk, which is my USB drive. So you see dual boot is a nice feature, but it eats all your fucking space. Then let's have a look here at CPU set. So let's see um, at which clock the CPU is running. And there we go. And CPU set says right now at 500 megahertz. Wow. And yeah, I guess my tablet has some issues with heat dissipation. So I think um, it clocks down sometimes because also sometimes I get, for instance, um, the heat is too much. We need to adjust the brightness to so lower the brightness. And it's really strange because also 3D applications lock up and I also did read um, some thread on the forums and some devices have this issue and it's a common issue on the tablet. But yeah, um, they try to fix it and I get a replacement tablet very soon from the seller. So the seller is really nice in this and um, he exchanges that. And here you can see Office and also in the forum some people said they cannot install Office or something but that's bullshit. You can install Office and that's absolutely no problem and it really feels like on a computer if you use mouse and keyboard. Yeah, the only problem I have with this tablet are um, the 3D games and the heat dissipation, but um, maybe I will fix it on my own. So you would have to open it up and reseat the heatsink and apply new thermal paste. So maybe I will do it on my own and also do a dismantling guide, so stay tuned guys. Then here you can see the languages and by default this tablet comes in Chinese and it took me two days to find out on how to set it to English. So that's really hard to do and I would be really happy if they would ship it out in English, but no, it comes in Chinese. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and now let me quickly show you my problem I have with 3D games and 3D apps. And we're now here in Halo from the Windows Store, and yeah, I can just play here for about 10 seconds, and then boom, it locks up. And this also happens in Android. For instance, I wanted to play GTA or um, some other racing games, and after about 30 seconds, the app locks up and you have to restart the tablet. And that's really annoying. So you cannot play 3D games and it's really funny because I can play Minecraft all day long but I cannot play apps like this one here. And that's a really strange issue. If it would be the heat issue then it would be also um, in Minecraft. That's really really strange. So let's just go and let's do a quick test here in Minecraft. So there we are, I have quickly started Minecraft and yeah, it runs, absolutely no problem, but the frame rate is not really good. So you have to lower the graphics, but um, yeah, frame rate is about 15 to 20 FPS, so 20 at maximum. And it could also be um, because um, the CPU is not running at its full clock because of the heat issue. And yeah, really strange issue, but you can see I can run Minecraft um, the whole time and it doesn't lock up. It just locks up in 3D apps, games, it doesn't matter if it's in Windows or in Android. And if you want to, um, for instance, watch 4K movies on YouTube or something, then for instance, it's it locks up after about 30 seconds and that's really strange. I have to um, figure out what is causing this and also um, just refresh the firmware. Maybe it's just a software issue, I don't know, but I guess it's a hardware issue. But you can see even Minecraft is playable and if the software would be optimized, maybe a bit more, also with Optifine, I'm pretty sure you can get something like stable 20 FPS. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that's the gaming performance. What we're going to do right now is a camera test then a GPS test and then you will hear my conclusion about the tablet. We're now here outside in my garden and yeah, that's the camera. 
and I'm using now Android so you can see that's the quality in Android but it looks the same in Windows and I have to say um, preview picture looks quite okay but if you have a look at the pictures on the computer doesn't really look that good now it just looks like the pictures on the iPad too so crispy blurry don't expect anything from the camera now camera really cheap and also here you can see for instance the picture size maximum here is 5 megapixels but yeah it just looks like a VGA camera. Then we can also capture videos right over here that's also possible then focusing is possible but yeah um, it doesn't look really sharp so quite blurry. Maximum um, video recording resolution is 720p and if you want to I can also upload some sample videos I will upload um, sample pictures on ChinaDevices.com and the link will be down below in the description and yeah as you can see the front facing camera um, it's a bit more laggy than the rear camera and it could be a bit more wide angle with my long arms I have absolutely no problem to get myself on the picture but yeah it could be um, a bit smooth and a bit more wide angle then let's quickly check out here the settings so you can also record videos here in 720p with the front facing camera and yeah that's the maximum video resolution of the front and rear camera. Alright guys so basically that was the camera on the Teclas X98 Air. Not really good but yeah what do you expect from a tablet and now let's do a quick GPS test. Now GPS on the tablet seems to be very good. For instance my Galaxy Note 4 has outstanding GPS so it works perfectly nice and it gets almost the same signal level here in the GPS test application. And my Galaxy Note 4 for instance finds about 17 satellites and this one here 16. But the signal bars are a bit better here on the tablet. So we have all of them green over 30, 40 and that's really really great. Now I wonder how it will perform in my car. So let's just go to my car, let's take it for a ride and let's see how GPS works in my car. So there we go guys. Alright, so sorry it's a bit shaky here in my car, it's really hard to drive and record the tablet with one hand. But yeah, um, you can see GPS outstanding. So I'm always on the road, no jumps, no lags and it works perfectly nice with the tablet. Now I have no mount for my tablet, maybe I will get a mount for the tablet but it's just too big in my opinion and if you have some uh, mounts which are really good then just leave me a comment down below um, maybe I will get one but I'm not really sure about it but you can see um, GPS on the tablet is really nice it's just like on my Galaxy Note 4 for instance GPS works really good absolutely nothing to say about this and you can use it with a mobile network or you can use here this offline um, maps from Sigic like I use right now but you could also use Google navigation and that will work absolutely nice with the tablet. Alright ladies and gentlemen and now let's come to my conclusion about the tablet. In my opinion this tablet is really nice so I like the design it's very slim and I really like that you can dual boot from Windows 8 to Android even though you cannot dual boot on the fly so um, you have to reboot but on the fly wouldn't be possible with just 2 gigs of RAM so that wouldn't be possible at all. But the tablet itself pretty nice, the performance is great but if you have the same problem with 3D apps locking up then this could be a hardware issue because um, of overheating of the CPU. Now if you have that problem I would send it back and I really like that Pandaville is such a reliable seller that they just exchange it and yeah that's really good that I bought from Pandaville and not from Aliexpress because if you buy from Aliexpress it can be a pain in the ass to return products. Now yeah all in all tablet real nice, battery lifetime nice, the display is probably the best thing because it looks totally outstanding. Just the only bad thing right now the performance so I'm not sure what I will do right now maybe um, I will exchange it or maybe I will just um, say hmm, hey I can fix it let's do it guys and let's open it up. So leave me a comment down below if you want to see me trying to fix it or if I should send it back. Alright and yeah that's basically my review. As always there will be a link down below to the written review also to the seller so feel free to check it out and I will keep you updated on chinadevices.com. Check the link down below it will be a discussion thread so you can also register and also ask questions and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. So thank you so much for watching all in all not a bad tablet and I hope I see you again in my next videos. Have a nice day and bye bye.